Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel, and this is a question from the Solomon Papers of C3, which now is corresponding to P3. And this question is from my end of topic worksheet for differentiation for my A level, um, K, uh, sorry, at Excel course. And it's question number six from the worksheet that I gave out. It's question number seven from this paper, Solomon H. And this question could very much be relevant to P1 of uh, at Excel A level 9709. So I'll save it in the playlist for that particular course as well. This would be relevant to that course also. Right, same kind of questions would come up. So here we have to express f of x in the form x plus a squared plus b where a and b are constants. Okay, so basically what they're asking us to do here simply is to complete the square. So to complete the square, we have to first make sure that this is in the form where you have a perfect square multiplying the x squared. The coefficient of x squared must be a perfect square. The coefficient of x squared here is 1, so that's fine. So then I write down the square root of x squared, which is x. I put the sign that comes next, and here I'm going to put a half of this coefficient, which is going to be 1, okay, without the x term, close the bracket and square it. So this now, if I square it, will give me... Um, almost this except it will give me a bit too much so if it will give me almost this part here without the plus five if i square this i'm going to get x squared minus two x but then i'm going to get plus one so i don't want that plus one so i'll take away one now this and this are the same these are exactly the same but then i have a plus five at the end so finally i'm going to have f of x is equal to x minus one squared plus four now it says express this in the form where a b are a and b are constants all right, so that is the expression for the um, completing the square. Then it says state the range of function f. Now the range of a function are the y values that they can take. So if I want to find the range of this function, this quadratic function here, then I have got to have an idea of how it looks. And this is only worth one mark, but this will help us understand um, how to deal with such questions. So a function like this, is going to be a quadratic, okay? And what we can tell from when we completed the square is we can find what's called the vertex, right? So if we consider this, this, this is basically gonna be uh, telling us what the vertex is. So it will tell us basically the lowest value that this can ever reach, all right? Because this is a type of curve which is a positive x squared, so it's a quadratic, it's going to have a turning point which is the minimum. So it's gonna have a minimum point below which it can never go. And the minimum value of this is going to be basically four. That's the lowest value you can ever reach. And that happens when x equals one. Okay, because you're always gonna have, basically if I, re if I kind of write the other way around, I'm always gonna have four plus something. Four plus something. I'll never, this will never be four minus anything because this thing will always end up being a positive value. After you square whatever's in here, it's gonna be positive. So you'll always be adding something to four. Now, the least amount you can add to 4 would be 0, which will happen when x equals 1. When you put x equals 1 in here, this becomes 0. So the lowest value this can ever reach is 4. Okay, because you, can, you can't ever have something negative added to the 4. It's always positive. So when x equals 1, y equals 4 is the vertex. That's why this, this actually turns at this point here at 1, 4. All right? So if we were to draw this without any consideration of the domain, it would look something like this, okay? But because the domain is limited for x is greater than or equal to 1, then we get rid of this section of it. Okay, we get rid of that section of it. So this, this graph only exists for x is 1 or more than 1. So this would be how the graph looks. So we can say that the range of this function is going to be f of x is greater than or equal to 4. All right, now that's important um, for us to realize um, because it could be, for example, that it said here x is greater than or equal to 2, in which case the range would not include the vertex, it would start from here. Or it could be x is greater than or equal to 0, in which case it would be the range um, would then be from the vertex upwards, not from there upwards. So you've got to be very careful about, um, you know, to see where the vertex is in relation to, um, you know, the domain of the function 
and therefore the range. So the range of the function here is going to be all values of y which are greater than 4. That's the range. The, x, the y values, okay, the output values are the range. So we can say the range is f of x is greater than or equal to 4. You can also write it as y is greater than or equal to 4. But you cannot write x is greater than or equal to 4. x is for the domain, not for the range. The range should be for y. Okay, so it's not really necessary to do this sketch. If you can picture this, uh, it's very easy for you to just do it in your head. All right, so now it says find an expression for the inverse function. So for us to find the inverse function, it's much easier for us to use this uh, form when we have completed the square. So if we start off with f of x equals the original function equals x minus 1 squared plus 4. If we start off with this, then that will help us find the expression for the inverse function. So to find the inverse of a function, we're basically swapping the x and y around. So I'm going to start off by writing y equals x minus 1 squared plus 4. So when we find the inverse, the x and y swap over. So this becomes the x and this becomes the y. Okay, for the inverse. So what we're going to do now to find the expression for the inverse of the function. Now this is now basically the inverse function. Y has become the inverse. Okay, so now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this y the subject. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 4 from both sides to isolate the squared term. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to have the square root of x minus 4 equals y minus 1. Now, for now I'm going to write plus or minus. Now, I'm not sure. We have to, we have to figure out whether we're using, going to use a positive square root or the negative square root. We can't use both, okay, because it's only going to be one of them. So you have y equals 1 plus or minus, I'll write it for now, x minus 4. Okay, so that is our expression, but it's not complete because we can't have both of these, otherwise it's not going to be a one-to-one -one function. Now this has, the only reason this has an inverse is because the original function is one-to-one. -one. Okay, if it was um, one-to-many, the inverse would be many-to-one, which is not a function. Would So if it was many-to-one, then if it was a many to one, the, the inverse would be one to many, which is not a function. Okay, it has to be a one to it has to be a one to one function for the inverse to be a function. If it's a many to one function, the opposite will be the inverse will be a one to many, which is not a function. You can only have one output for every x input. Okay, so now we have to figure out uh, which one of these. Are we going to accept the plus or minus? Now, the easiest way to understand this is just, just to look at the graph. If the uh, part of the graph that we are uh, keeping is to the right of the vertex, then we're going to take the positive square root. So I know that this is going to be 1 plus root of x minus 4. But if, if you're not sure, if you're not sure, then you can choose a point um, that you know on the graph. For example... Um, we can choose, for example, when x equals 2 in the original graph, when x equals 2, then f of 2 is going to give us 4 minus 2 times 2, which is 4 plus 5. So f of 2 is going to give us 5. So we know in our original graph, f2 equals 5. As you can see from there, if I put 2 here, I'm going to have 1 squared plus 4, which is 5. Right. So what we're going to do is, that means when I put 5 inside the inverse function, it should give me 2 because you're swapping the x and y around. Okay, now if I choose, um, you know, my y, uh, if I choose the, 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 the negative one, for example, negative root of x minus 4, if I chose this, okay, then what's going to happen is when I put in 5 instead of here, I'll have 1 minus the square root of 5 minus 4, which is 1. Okay, which gives me zero, which is not correct. So that plus must be not correct. And we can verify that when I choose uh, put to put five inside the function for one plus the square root of x minus four, we can see that when I put one plus the square root of uh, five minus four, I have one plus one, which is two, which actually is correct. So that's how you can verify whether you're going to keep the plus or the minus. Okay, in general, when you have a curve like this, when, you're, when your uh, range or when your domain of the original function 
is to the right of the vertex, then we take the positive. When it's to the left of the vertex, we take the negative. That's the general kind of understanding. So there's the answer to part C. Now, they didn't ask us to write down the domain. They said find an expression for the inverse of f of x. If they ask us to find f, if, um, the, sorry, not f, the inverse of f of x, so they said find the inverse of f of x, we should also give its domain. And if we were required to do that, so we could say, therefore, the inverse of f of x is 1 plus the square root of x minus 4. And if they asked us to write the domain, we would say the domain. Now, the domain of this is the same as the range of the original function. But we write it as in terms of x, so it'll be x is greater than four, equal to 4. Now, that's extra in this question. We don't have to write that down. But if the question said, find the inverse of f of x, it doesn't just say find an expression for it, then we should write down the domain. As x is greater than or equal to 4, remember the domain of the inverse is the same as the range of the original function. Okay, so there's the answer to 7 part C. Now for 7 part D. It says describe two full or two transformations that would map the graph of y equals f inverse of f of x, the f in the inverse of f of x to y equals root x. So the inverse of f of x, remember, was 1 plus the square root of x minus 4. Was that it? The inverse of f of x, we found it here, was 1 plus the square root of x minus 4. That's correct. Okay. So we want to know what takes us from 1 plus the square root of x minus 4, which transformations take place that take us from that to root of x. So let's deal with the horizontal transformations first. So what we can see here, okay, this has to um, move four spaces, okay, for us to get from there to there. This has to move four spaces to the left. Remember, it's the opposite what's inside here. If we, if we were to draw the, the graph of this, it will look like that. That's y equals root of x. If we were to draw, draw the graph of this, it has been transformed four units to the right and one unit up. So if we consider this point, this is the point one, sorry, four and one. So it has moved for us to go from, from this to this, we have to move four units to the left. So we can say it's a translation. Translation of minus four and zero. And then it has to go um, one unit down for us to go from there to there okay it has to go one unit um down okay so the you can say vertically it's going to be another translation but it's going to be from there to there one unit down so it's zero minus one okay so those are the two transformations so the two transformations which describe fully okay how you would map these together. Okay, so those are two transformations, these two together. So that's how this will end up over there. Okay, remember inside the function, it's like the, the, um, it's like the opposite. Okay, so for us to go from there to there, you have to use, move four spaces, okay, to the left. Okay, so you want to move four spaces to the left, you have to do minus four zero. And for us, from, for, uh, for us to go from one down, we have to go one unit down, so you're gonna have zero minus four. Okay, so that's how we can understand that. Um, that's part D. Now for part E, it says find an equation for the normal to the curve y equals f of minus x at the point where x equals 8. So we know the inverse function as we wrote in this form was f of x equals 1 plus 1 plus the square root of x minus 4. So we want to find the equation to the normal to this curve. So we've got to find the gradient of the tangent and therefore then the gradient of the normal when x equals 8. So we need two things. We need to find the coordinates of the point. So we have when x equals 8, we want to find what y is. Okay, so we can say that um, the inverse function, if you put 8 into it, you will give you the y value. This is 1 plus the square root of 8 minus 4. So it's 1 plus, that's going to be the square root of 4, which is 2. So that's 3. So the coordinates of the points is 8 and 3. And then we got to find the gradient of the normal. 
which is perpendicular to the tangent. So the tangent is found by finding the differential of f minus 1x. How could I write? So let me say, let's say we want to find dy dx. Okay, we want to find dy dx. Now, dy dx is going to be, okay, this is y, say call this y equals 1 plus the square root of x minus 4. So uh, we can rewrite this as y equals 1 plus x minus 4 to the power of a half. So it's easy for differentiation. So the 1 will become 0, and you're going to have to multiply by the power. You're going to keep the bracket as it is. Then you take 1 from the power to the power of minus a half, then multiply by the differential what's inside the function, which is 1. So dy dx will be basically 1 over 2 times the square root of x minus 4. That's how that will simplify. So therefore, the gradient of the tangent is going to be when x equals 8, 1 over 2 times the square root of 4, which is going to be 1 over 4. So therefore, the gradient of the normal is going to be the negative reciprocal, which is minus 4. So now we have what we need. We have two point. We have the point on the on the line, and we have the gradient of the line. We can find the equation very easily. Y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus 3 equals m, which is minus 4 times x minus 8. So y minus 3 equals minus 4x plus 4 8 is 32. So we end up with y equals minus 4x plus 35. If you want to write it in this form, they didn't specify how to write it. So we can leave it like this. That's fine. Sometimes I say in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are integers, in which case you would write it as 4x plus y minus 35 equals 0. But both of these are fine in expressing the answer for this question. And that concludes this question. Question um, number six from the endotopic worksheet. Question number seven from the Solomon H paper. Um, and hopefully that was clear for all of you. Now, if you would like to watch uh, other videos from this paper, Solomon H of P3, you can find them in this playlist over here. You want to watch other videos from this endotopic worksheet from my P3 collection of differentiation. You can find that over here. Um, this particular question, many parts of it will be relevant to also um, differentiation of um, P3. And also it will be relevant to functions of P1 and differentiation of P1. So I'll try and put some P1 of Edexcel, uh, Cambridge, I mean. P1 of, Edex, of Cambridge has this particular topic inside it, which is functions. Also differentiation that we did here would also be included because this is using the chain rule that's included in P1 of Cambridge as well. So I'll try and put some playlists here uh, where you can refer to those other questions of those types in those other, um, you know, syllabuses, different syllabuses. Um, thank you for watching and see you soon.